Hello everybody, welcome back to Create Above and Beyond. In today's episode, we're going to be making our copper machine factory. To create our copper machines, it all starts with some resin. And to get resin, we need arboreal extractors. So the way the arboreal extractor works is you basically place it next to a tree, and you'll see the little green light, and you'll see the sap color inside the block, and that lets you know that it's on. So then you can kind of watch, and this will fill up. Now, I thought we might be able to use the linkage amplifiers on the augments to make it go faster. Um, however, that does not seem to work. I believe the only ones you can put here are the ones that make the tank larger. And there you go. You can see we got our first 25 resin out of this tree. So this does only work with naturally spawning trees or trees grown with saplings. So, for example, over here, we grew this tree with saplings and then took off a bunch of the leaves and it still seemed to work. However, there is definitely a limit here. This is also a tree we grew with saplings, but we took all but one leaf off. And you can see that the light's off, there's no resin in here, and it basically means that that's off. Also, if you break any of the wood, it'll turn it off. And sadly, this is really disappointing to me, if you build your own tree, it does not work. Um, I had the idea of like a big mega tree that I could build and then basically take all of our sap from there. However, sadly, that does not seem like it's going to work. It seems like we're going to have to grow our trees individually. Alrighty, so I went ahead and did a big long line of arboreal extractors. We have 32 extractors, each with their own tree. I believe I could put more per tree, but then the efficiency of each extractor goes down. Um, so we'll see how this looks for now, and if we do end up wanting to upgrade these in the future, that's definitely something that we can do. But now all we have to do is hook up some pipes all the way down so we can pump stuff out. And I messed up. I thought I did this five apart. I only did it four apart. Um, oh, we're gonna have to push those trees back a block. <laughs> all right, so that should be a little bit better. So now we should be able to have our pipes coming through here and have our central pipe going down. Perfect. So we want our first pump to be eight from the end. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We should be able to put a pump right here. Craft it up with one fluid pipe and one cogwheel gets our mechanical pump and we can place it right there. And then I have an idea of how to run this and we'll see if it works or not. I'm not sure if it'll be enough power, but we should be able to do a cog and then a large cog off to the side. And then another large cog to make that vertical. We should be able to place it like that. And then below that, we can do a campfire and then a encased fan. And then we just need to give that a redstone signal. So we just craft a lever. And that should work. It looks like our fan is upside down. So we will fix that. So fan and then lever. And that should power our pump. Now to check that, what we can do is grab our wrench, open these up. It looks like we are not actually pumping that out. It's because we're going the wrong way. So we can first that and now we can see our rubber being pumped out. Very cool. So we just need to do this all the way down with every eight blocks um, having a mechanical pump. And this will actually pump out eight blocks. So it's actually like every 16 blocks. Um, that we need to pump other than these because this will yeah this will actually need its own pump so we will need one every single eight blocks but that's not too bad of a deal so i'll go all the way down get our pipes laid and catch up with you guys when we're ready to start building our production line all right so our first try does not seem to be going nearly fast enough so these ones up in the front here are definitely not emptying out they don't seem to be filling up quite as fast but they're definitely not emptying however these few at the end are actually able to keep up so I think our system does make sense we just got to speed up these pumps by a whole lot so let's get a better power system hooked up to these and see how fast we can get these to go all right so we got this sped up but we still have an issue with our pipe network so you can see these four on the end here are pulling out just fine. They're working as intended. But the problem is the rest of our network is not. Now the reasoning for that is we have this mechanical pump, which is going this way, and we have this mechanical pump, which is pulling here. 
And what I was hoping is that this pump would be able to pull out of here and go that way. What I think is happening is this pump is actually pushing out into these pipes and trying to go into our extractor. So what we need to do, I think, is put a pump here on every single one of these um, pipes to make sure that it's one directional. Now I might try to come up with a better idea for that because that'll be a lot of pumps and a lot of power to get those all running. Um, but I'll try out a few things and let you guys know what I come up with. Okay, sweet. Well, that's easy enough. So all I think I need to do to fix this is put in these fluid tanks as kind of one-way buffers. So these four extractors are hooked up with this pump, which goes into this fluid tank. And then these four extractors plus this fluid tank are hooked up to the rest of the system with this pump. And then what we need to do is swap this out. So we need our tank here to work as kind of our essentially one-way valve. And then our pump here and our um, cog down below that to power it. And that should work. So I just need to do that going all the way down our line. All right, and then with that, with all of our one-way valves installed, all of our boil extractors are now empty which means that we are pumping out at a rate that is able to keep up with all of our extractors, which to say isn't that impressive because these extractors really don't make much resin, but it should be enough to keep a relatively small factory stocked. And it even looks like we have managed to fill up this fluid tank pretty quickly. So um, I'll get this fluid tank upgraded a bit and then we will start breaking ground on our copper machine factory. So our next step in this process is actually really easy. All we need to do is take this resin, which we're producing, and craft it into rubber. And to do that, all we need to do is take 250 millibuckets of it and compact it, and that gives us one rubber, which we can then bulk blast with lava into cured rubber, which we can then use to combine with, where's the recipe? Be in shaped crafting, here. Cured rubber, connect mechanism, cured rubber gets us our sealed mechanism. Now we could take the kinetic mechanisms from our other factory automatically, however we don't need thousands and thousands and thousands of these, so I think we'll just do it manually, dump in a bunch of kinetic mechanisms, whatever need, copper mechanisms, and have it automatically crafted up for us. So to get this all hooked up, it actually should be pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pipeline off here, and then at this point we need to go down a block. So we'll have our pipeline coming through here and then put basins off the pipeline. Three, four, I crafted four of them. I would imagine this should be able to keep up. If it doesn't, then we can just upgrade this to have more basins or if it's going way too fast, we can have less basins, which also is not a problem. Um, and then we just have a line coming out here with some shafts like so, and then we'll put a belt in there and that will take our uncured rubber out and then all we have to do is smelt it up over here, and that's pretty much it for our rubber. And then this is going to be how we actually cook up our rubber. So we'll have our fan down on this end, which will be powered. Then it'll push air through here, which will push our lava through, and basically cook up our rubber. Then we'll make this line go all the way down until it's like right at the end. And then we'll put a brass funnel filtered for the cured rubber, so that way it'll wait till it's cured, and then go into our storage system. All right, and here is our completed rubber part of the factory. So we've got our presses all going crazy over here. And then they come out here to get smelted down. Got our fan with our lava. And then we've got a funnel at the end here. And that funnel actually should be filtered for rubber in case this ever gets emptied. We could also lock this drawer and use a regular funnel, but I kind of like the idea of having everything filtered and have the brass funnels because I think it looks a little bit nicer. I did switch out our belt with just ground and the reason was is that um, on the belt it could only be one item per block and it all kind of queued up and these weren't able to go anymore but with them being pushed via the fan the way it works is actually a little bit smoother because what it's going to do is every single rubber is going to be cooked and able to come out immediately and so that just kind of speeds up our whole process and we already have 592 um, rubber and this has not been running for very long at all. So after that our last step is to just automatically craft the rubber and the kinetic mechanisms and we're done with this factory. Then all we got to do is kind of decorate it and make it look all pretty. 
Now we can automatically craft copper machines, but we cannot automatically craft copper casings. And I think that was a change with the update because what I noticed is our andesite factory has a line to craft copper casings, or sorry, andesite casings, and it's no longer producing. So you can see our kinetic mechanism drawer is actually full. We have 32.8 thousand kinetic mechanisms, so we'll have to put some more storage upgrades in here. Our andesite alloy is a bit lower with 12.4k, but that's still way more than enough. Um, and the reason it hasn't actually gone up is because with that being um, kind of bottlenecked, this split essentially isn't working. So what I might do is switch this out with a brass tunnel, um, and I think that will make it so that it'll keep producing andesite even if this line is all full. But we have not been producing any more andesite casings. Now the reason for that is if we go back here on our andesite casing line, um, you can see that originally you're able to mix andesite alloy and logs, and that would get you your andesite casings. Um, but sadly, if we go ahead and look at the recipe for andesite casings, you can craft those with a andesite alloy and a log, but you cannot automatically craft those anymore. So I don't know if that was an oversight or if that was an intentional change, but um, luckily we have more than enough andesite casings. And when it comes down to crafting the brass casings, copper casings, and whatever casings come after that, it looks like we'll just have to do that all manually. So I went ahead and got all the stuff we need to finish building our factory. Um, but we can see that we've actually run out of our backup supplier, just about ran out. And what that means is all four of these are no longer going to be going all the time. It seems like we only actually have two that are ever activated, but I think we'll keep all four just in case we want to upgrade this farm um, in the future. I think looking at how many we have now, um, 853, <laughs> probably won't need to upgrade it too, too soon, but um, we'll definitely have plans for that in the future and we'll be ready for it. All right, so to get this all set up, essentially what I need to do first is I need to take items out of our drawer and onto a depot. The reason I want to do that is because we're going to be using mechanical arm to set all of our crafts up because that's going to be the easiest way to move our items around. So first we're going to set up our craft for our belts, which is just nine rubber like this. And then we want our arm to take from here and place into each of these slots. And then the last thing we need is we need a second set of crafters here, and this will make our andesite machines. Now I'm not sure if our arm is going to reach all the way over here. It will not, so maybe we have to move this more centralized. We can even go out front here. That might look kind of cool. So. We want to take items from here, place in, whoops, take items from here, place in all of these slots here, there and there, and then, will that reach? That will reach, perfect. So that'll basically grab all of our items and fill these in as we need them. So then we can just hook up the power going to our arm. You can see it will start filling those in one by one. Basically what it does is it just goes to the next open slot. And once those are all filled in, um, we do need to get power to this, but once they're filled in, basically our crafters will go and craft up our item. And then to set up our craft for our mechanisms, we do need to feed this with kinetic mechanisms. So we'll do that real simply by just adding a drawer with a chute below it. So we just put our kinetic mechanisms in there. They'll filter down into here, getting our sealed mechanisms. All right, and there we go. We're now automatically crafting our belts here. So you can see it's going to fill up all the rubber. And when that's done, our craft should start right away and automatically make our belts. You can see we already got nine in there because it crafts three per craft. And then we'll go grab some kinetic mechanisms and get this one going. So there is a stack of kinetic mechanisms that we'll put up in the drawer there. And you can see that we are going to be automatically crafting our sealed mechanisms. Sweet. And I mean, that's that's it. Because so we can grab our sealed mechanisms here, belts here, and then extra over here. So let's jump right into a quick time lapse to actually build our aesthetic building around our new machine.
Alrighty, and here is our sealed mechanism factory. I definitely think this thing could have been bigger, but the size of the machine was pretty small, so I decided to keep the factory pretty small along with that. So for our materials, we went with gabbro, acacia, and then some dolomite to kind of be a little bit of an accent block, and I think it looks really good all kind of put together. And then in here, we've got a little bit of decoration with some pipes on the ceiling and some of these screens from XK Deco. And then we have our whole machine over here. Now this thing is actually going pretty slow. You can see we're actually out of rubber. Um, although we do have 800 belts and 89 sealed mechanisms. So we definitely have more of those than we're ever gonna need most likely. However, I don't like that it's kind of not keeping up. So we are going to upgrade it. So I've got another stack of arboreal extractors. And so we're gonna go upgrade the farm with those and hopefully just get this to go a little bit faster because if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So if I have a stack of these, that essentially means that there needs to be two more per tree because I have 32 trees here. Um, and I'm assuming that I can pump out of the side here. So let's wait for one of these to have some resin in it and see if we can pump out the side. So there we go, it's got the resin in it. Looks like that is extracting, okay. All right, so I've got a good system figured out. So essentially what we're gonna do is take our extractors and place them by our trees and then connect them up just like this. Make sure that that's not a clear pipe so it'll connect up. And now this extractor will be taken out here through this pump and all the way down our line. So we just repeat that pattern all the way down and that will allow us to place another stack of arboreal extractors and hopefully keep up with our farm a little bit better. All right, so it is not running all that much faster. And after doing a little bit of research, the reason it's not running any faster, it's because if you have three or more extractors on a tree, it takes 50 seconds to extract the resin versus if you have one extractor, it only takes 25 seconds. So even though we tripled our amount of extractors, we only actually increased our production by a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to, instead of pulling off of the same trees, I think I'll just plant a new line of trees right here, kind of behind it, and have the extractors extract from those trees. Um, so that way we should be, each extractor should have its own tree and we should actually triple our output versus, I think it's only 1.25 times um, the speed with all of those new extractors. All right, so hopefully this is the last time we have to look at all these pipes, but what I did is I added a second set of trees, one block behind with their own extractors, and those just kind of come out on the same lines. Um, everything is, in fact, close enough where they are being pumped out, so it all seems to be working pretty good. Now, I do feel like it is going faster inside our actual factory here. I mean, um, these still aren't active all the time, so we definitely could go faster. Um, but I think they're active quite a bit more than they were before. We might upgrade this thing in the future because I'd really like to see this whole tank fold with resin, but it's not that big of a deal. It's kind of just an aesthetic thing. Um, I'm not really sure what to do in terms of decorating this area. I don't know if I just plant a bunch of trees around it and make it look like a forest and then do some more industrial decoration here. I'm not really sure. So if you guys have any ideas on what to do with this space, definitely let me know in the comments down below. So one thing that's been a little annoying to me is that with my double jump and no slime boots, I'm taking a lot of fall damage. Um, now the issue with that is with our Farmer's Delight Buddy Metal, it essentially means we don't have to eat. However, if we take damage, we do have to eat. So us constantly jumping around and taking damage um, is making it so that I have to eat a lot of food and we're very quickly running out of Shepherd's Pie and it's being annoying to have to go back and craft. So one thing that you guys recommended is to craft a culinary station where apparently you can combine different foods and it like combines them together to have food with like a lot of saturation. So is it just as simple as combining these in here? Looks like we need some kind of item here. So looking at the mod, looks like we can make a sandwich or a bowl of food. So I'm guessing this might just take bread. So we'll grab some bread and see if that works. Aha, there we go. So if we put that in there, it says makes Quintuple plate of shepherd's pie sandwich. Though it does say bland. Um, I wonder if that's because we have all just the same ingredients. So let's maybe grab some other food that we have laying around and see if that maybe makes it not bland. 
All right, so I've got a few different food here. I just kind of want to try stuff out. Can we do stuff like enchanted apples? We can. Okay, interesting. So I wonder if that gives the effects of it. I think we'll try with a normal golden apple. We'll do some mutton, baked potato, and a steak. Okay, so there we go. Now it says delicious. So it says ingredients, plate of shepherd's pie, golden apple, cooked mutton, baked potato, and steak. So if we eat that, <laughs> we got to look at the name. <laughs> uh, looks like we should probably name them <laughs> if we make more of these. So if we eat this... Um, oh, we do get the apple effects. That's pretty good. So I'm not sure on the saturation on that. I wonder if it just combines it. That would be my guess, is that it all just combines. So let's actually make a bunch of these. Call them create a sandwich. So we'll go ahead and craft a bunch of those. They do stack. Do they stack? Oh no, we should not have shift clicked them. Cause it looks like some of these when we ran out of other materials, they just kind of craft it down. So like this one just says baked potatoes and steak. These are baked potatoes, steak, golden apples. Oh, that was a mistake. So these ones, I guess we'll keep around in case you run out. But um, these have all four of our ingredients and that should work out pretty well for us. So we'll store the rest of these in our cupboard over here for when we need them. And hopefully that works out a bit better for us. Now, one thing that we could do to also solve our issue is craft long fall boots which cancels fall damage when worn. Um, however, I don't know if I can enchant these or not. So maybe we'll craft a pair of those at some point and see if we can enchant them. Um, Cause I really like having the double jump and wall running. I don't really see a reason to craft those long fall boots if we lose out on those enchantments. All right, so today we're gonna be starting our buddy card segment a little bit early because I want to check out the aquaculture mod and see if we can't get our aquaculture set complete. So to get started, we're gonna first place down our worm farm and our tackle box. So the worm farm basically works like a composter where you can put anything that you can compost it in it and then right click and you get one worm per thing that you compost, which is pretty good. So then you go over to your tackle box and you put your fishing rod in. You can put a hook, some worms, and um, fishing line in here. And you also have space for a bobber, but we do not have a nautilus shell to actually craft that up. So we're gonna just go with the worm and the um, worm, the hook and the fishing line for now. And we'll see, see how that goes. So we just caught our first two fish and you can see that every worm has 20 durability. So essentially um, we can keep fishing and get more and more fish. <laughs> but before we do that, I'm gonna run up here and enchant this with lure two so we can start getting stuff a little bit faster. Oh, perfect. Unbreaking three, buddy bunny three, luck of the sea three, lure three. It doesn't get better than that. There we go. We got our first buddy card, algae. All right, so after about 15 minutes of fishing, this is what it looks like with our cards we just fished up and our cards from our mystery packs. And we're missing a single card that we don't have either a shiny or a non-shiny version of it. So I'll keep fishing a little bit until we get that final card. And it looks like we are almost there. And when I have that, I'm not gonna keep fishing because our mystery packs, we will get more of the aquaculture cards and eventually fill this all up. I don't know. I thought I'd get lucky with some <laughs> mystery card packs, but we're still missing that one card. It's been like another 20 minutes of fishing. We still haven't got it. I guess I'll just get back to it because I really want that medal today. All right, so looking at the durability in our fishing rod, looks like that was 111 catches to finally get our final buddy card. So we can finally put that in there, and we got our medal. Um, before we go enchant our medal and check out what it does, we also got this Neptune's Bounty, which I think is some kind of loot crate. It is. So we got Neptunium leggings. Whoa. Which are pretty good. That looks like diamond level. And it also makes you weightless underwater. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, everything feels normal. I don't feel like <laughs> any different, like weightless. Interesting. I think we're gonna keep our buddy seal on for now, but um, that is good to have. We also got a message in a bottle. The Turniverse is a truly incredible place. Give me anything? Nope, just a message. Okay, 
Interesting. Okay, there we go. Buddy boost two, buddy binding three. That's perfect in chance. So we can put this on. Nourishment luck two, dolphin's grace. Oh, it gives you dolphin's grace. And the nourishment was left over for my other thing, so it just gives luck two and dolphin's grace. Um, that's pretty cool. Oh man, we can swim so fast. Um, that's awesome. Might have to do some <laughs> exploration underwater now. Just get some water breathing potions because we can really fly now. That's crazy. So I think just like all the other metals, um, Farmer's Light is definitely the most useful kind of general metal. But we will keep this one around for whenever we would do some fishing or we want to do some farming. So with all of our fishing and the few mystery cards we opened today, we are now at 90%. That leaves us with only 10% to go. Um, we're pretty close guys, I think. I think what I'm gonna do is get my armor fully upgraded. And then once my armor is fully upgraded, then I will actually go ahead and craft the perfect buddy steel armor. Just because I think it'd be fun to have like the boost all the way from just regular buddy steel to perfect buddy steel or all at once going to max buddy steel. Um, yeah, I think that'd be pretty fun. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. Definitely watch out for next episode because we're finally going to get into automating our brass mechanisms. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.